2020 was an interesting year for DynaVap Live. Welcome to DynaVap Live. I am Retail Josh. For now, I'm George. We had many illustrious guests. This is Chris Casey from Compliant Technology. Well, welcome on Austin. It's great to finally have you on the show. Jerry from Planet of the Vapes. Troy of 420 Vape Zone. Chris Bailey of Dynatech. Guest hosts. I'm Jeff Alexander. I'm Fandana. Shout outs from all over the world. Yeah, I see Billy Bob from Australia. Sent Nomad from Berlin. Marson from Poland. Daniel from Guam. Keith Newton from Redcliffe, Alberta, Canada. Dutch Mike from Netherlands. Noah in Amsterdam. Yeah, Amsterdam's pretty awesome. Forrest from Wakanda. <laughs> and Cobra from Couch. And my personal favorite moments, Pranav in space. <laughs> I spaced out. <laughs> Pranav talking about humpy haircuts. Someone out there is giving camels amazing haircuts. Just need a little more swag. <laughs> Now, so Bryce, uh, one of uh, <laughs> It's an amazing song, uh, No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, George's stories of mishaps. You're going to be going to Spanibus soon, correctly? Yep. I like landed in Munich and 10 minutes after I landed, I got the text, Spanibus has been canceled. I'm like, oh. And you know, here we were thinking that, uh, all right, things will kind of stabilize a little bit, which they didn't. We were looking for mushrooms and uh, we ran into a little bit of a little difficulty on the way home. There's the tire kind of rolling next to the car. All the airbags deployed. It was a hell of an impact. You know, here's part of the wheel. Uh, when I heard the news, it was definitely alarming, but I'm glad you guys are okay and... Our time here in this uh, universe is, is limited and could end at any moment. So I think it's important that we're kind of thankful for who we are and what we have and who we know and how we interact with them and just generally be appreciative for uh, what we have. Mm -hmm. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Keep the test for a tasty rip. Welcome to DynaVap Live. Today is December 17th. I'm Retail Josh. And I'm George. I'm Fondana. We have a jam-packed show for you later on. We have Randy from Puff It Up joining us in a little bit. But first, let's do some shout-outs from the chat. We got Matt G from Nashville. I see the gardener nice. from a northern Noe, West Virginia. Uh, Ubar Dog from the UK. Ooh, F4. Ew, at work as usual. Uh, you got Nacha from France. Devin yeah. Oaks, Massachusetts, with a bunch of snow. Bunch of snow? There seems like there's snow everywhere. There huh? was a huge snowstorm. Did it snow in Florida? You missed us? Uh, no. Oh. Yep, and we'll take a few more here. I see we have Neil from Wisconsin slash Minnesota. Uh, Pez Lemur from Mexico. Nice. Did you get snow, Pez? Yeah, let us know. And so we want to thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and ring the bell so that way you're notified whenever we release new content, such as DynaFap Live, Exploring the Dynaverse, Episodes of the Snap. Really appreciate that support. If this is your first time watching or if you just picked up a VapCap and you have any questions, share the hashtag first click in the chat. We'd love to get those answered. Uh, we also have Michael on guitar. You may recognize Michael from uh, exploring the Dynaverse. He was the host of the Illumify episode, so welcome him on. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing some exciting giveaways a little bit later on, so let's see you uh, see those questions now. Um, I think now's a good time to thank the community, don't you, Donna? I agree. And so let's thank the Dynaverse. Thank you, Dynaverse. FC Forum. R slash Dynavap. R slash Vaporettes and Vapor Asylum. All that community support is what makes it possible that we're sitting here today discussing VAP caps, uh, hanging out with you, and just having a good time. We really appreciate that. 
And part of that community is asking questions. We want to know what's going through your heads, what you're dealing with, what you're experiencing in 2020. So this month's question is, what is your most positive event of 2020? The options for the question was relationship change, new child born slash adopted, adopted a new pet, or started a new hobby. Uh, now, George, what was your like for that? If you had to choose one, what was yours? What was your vote? Uh, I actually did start a new hobby. And what was your hobby? Instagram. Ah, ah yep, that's yeah, right. Yeah, you did. And I'd about been you? avoiding social media, <laughs> and I just kind of came to the conclusion when I was, like many of us, forced into quarantine. You know what? Maybe it's time that I learned how to do a new trick. Mm -hmm. And then Donna, what was, uh, without getting into the specific top moment, what, out of those choices, what was your vote on that tab? Uh, I'd probably say a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, I um, practicing guitar again. Ah, really? Yeah. Yep, that was my choice as well. And so uh, make sure that when we do these uh, community tab questions, let us know, vote. We love seeing that. And make sure that you join the Discord. It's a great place to really kind of communicate, converse, hang out, and discuss whatever you're interested in, whether, whether it be food, music, video games, movies, fat caps, other vaporizers, whatever you want to discuss, there's a home for it. So Pranav just shared that link in the chat, so check it out. And I think we also need to thank all the wholesalers out there because it what? Yes, we do. It's yes. what makes it possible for us to be able to get these products all around the world. Uh, there's a lot to that, and I think our sales dude, Jeff, has some wholesalers that he'd like to feature on this month's Wholesale Spotlight. Welcome to Dynavap's Wholesale Spotlight. I'm Jeff Alexander, sales dude for Dynavap. The Wholesale Spotlight features Dynavap wholesalers to encourage you to visit our brick and mortar and e-commerce partners. Today we are featuring four Dynavap wholesale partners, Smoking Culture, Next Gen Vape Shop, Switch to Vapes, and Vapor Galleria. Smoking Culture, located in Staten Island, New York. Stop in and see Igor and check out his nice glass pieces, hokas, smoking accessories, and ample supply of Dynavap product. The next Dynavap partner is Next Gen Vape Shops. Justin has two locations in Brooklyn, Avenue J and 86th Street. Both locations have a relaxing lounge atmosphere with a variety of vape juices, vape products, and of course, Dynavap. Next is Switch to Vapes, located in West Kelowna, British Columbia, a new vape partner in West Colonia. Jason, the owner, has a full lineup of e-liquids, vapes, vape supplies, and Dynavap. And the last partner is Vapor Galleria. Vapor Galleria is a franchise operation based in Texas. Galleria has shops in Texas and Pennsylvania. Vapor Galleria manufactures their own products in a clean environment, fully automated lab, producing premium quality e-liquids, and now you can taste their product with Dynavap. For more information, please visit www.dynavap.com and click where to buy to see all Dynavap wholesale partners and e-commerce sites around the world. Thank you for joining us, and if you have a shop in your area that should be on our website, please send me their information to jeff at dynavap.com. Until next time. Thank you, Michael, for that musical interlude. Appreciate it. You're much more talented than I will ever be on the guitar. And we welcome Randy from Puff It Up. Randy. And Baby Yoda. And yep. Baby Yoda. You came with child in tow. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's a very big year for me. Thank you. And then, uh, Donna, I know you had some questions for Randy right off the bat. I do. Hi, Donna. Hi. 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 It's good to meet you. It's I'm good Randy. to meet you. Hi, Randy. Yeah, it's it's fun, awesome. Donna. Yeah. Actually, Donna. you guys, he's my account. <laughs> So now that we show cans real quick, sorry, I got to sanitize. Oh, go on. You too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know the yeah. rules here. <laughs> I do. I do. These guys are so strict. It's amazing. I know. I know. Oh, hey, no Randy. I, it, do you need a light? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, that's one no thing I'm sad about in 2020. Uh huh. I can't lick ankles anymore. Isn't that the worst? You I know? got here and I was excited to lick everyone's ankles, mm. and we can't <laughs> lick ankles. I know. I yeah, know. It's I, like, I was oh, all up for licking. Why did we even ankle? show up here? Right? <laughs> God, it's insane. So, sweetie, you have yes, our products, and you have a lot of other products. Tons of them. How does our product kind of stand out versus the other ones? How do we compare to other people? Well, the first way it stands out is that it's always on our front page. The reason it's nice. always on the front page is we typically take photos of products that we have on us, and I Good. almost always have a VAP cap on me. So does the rest of the team. Zach, another one of our photographers, yep. Sam. 
were always just carrying a, a vap cap. They're easy to carry. They're fun to have. How it stands out, most vaporizers are battery based and the vap cap kind of skipped that little piece and went, you know, lighter based, which is amazing. Um, you never have to worry about charging it. It's already always ready to use. I'm sure you know these things. You oh, use yeah. a VAP cap, right? Maybe once or twice. Once or twice. <laughs> yeah. 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 What else you got? Ask me something. What's your sign? What's my sign? Yeah. What's your sign? Leo. Leo. Awesome. I'm a Libra. Are we compatible? Excellent. I think we are. Awesome. <laughs> okay. No, no. There's Score. the other one. Is that made for a Leo, bro? What's that? Leobra? Leobra? Leobra. Leobra. We could we be the Leobras. That's Spanish for the Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're killing me, man. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so when we were practicing before, what is your favorite color? My favorite color? Green. Green. Very much so. Yeah, I, I think I you guys. Tell. I think we have that in common here. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed a few color, uh, green accents around the building. We, we do have a little bit yeah, of green. Only a few. Yeah, just here and there. Yeah, it's subtle. So um, this last year, what's been your highlight this last year? I mean, well, really, I mean. Well, this is a great way to end 2020 personally because yeah. we've been sheltered in place like crazy in our business and to actually get to travel here safely and meet you guys. Uh, this is my first time at Dynavab headquarters after working with you guys for a billion years. Nice. We've talked a million times. We finally get to meet each other. Yes. George and I have seldom had chances to hang out together. Same with Josh. <laughs> we meet each other in these giant trade shows where there's a thousand people talking. There is. You go to say hi yep. and you try to shake hand. By the time you get your hand out, someone's pulling you back yep. to tell yeah, you like, something. Hey, Yep. And you don't have any personal experience. This was a really fortunate time to come and hang out with you guys, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate yeah. it. We're ecstatic to it. have you. And now, Donna, since you brought it up, what was your top moment of 2020? Oh, my top moment. Are we going to ready to put that picture up Show there? It. Or do we do it live? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I ended up getting this really cool Buddha tattoo. That's amazing. Hear no, see no, speak no evil. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, guys. Um, I originally was going to get that on my leg, uh, and the artist that did this, her father did my calf. He uh, put a dragon on my, on my leg. I love that Yoda. <laughs> You're killing me, man. We're listening. We, we're, 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 we're you are audience. listening. Those big ears are meant for hearing. Uh -huh. <laughs> it is. No, so it was just an amazing experience. Um, her father had passed away since then, and it was nice just to sit there. This was three hours, and wow. I, it, it didn't hurt. Nice Which was looks three so hours of focus. Yeah. So good. Hmm? Three hours of focus. Three hours of focus. It was a great conversation I had with my tattoo artist. I think there might be another tattoo coming in the future. Uh oh. Yeah. 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 Can you tell us where yet? I don't know. We might, <laughs> <laughs> it might. It might be on uh, Instagram too. We'll see. I have no shame, so it could be anywhere on my body, you guys. <laughs> and what about on your eye? <laughs> Ooh, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> oh, haven't you seen that? People putting tattoos in their eyes. Oh, I don't know we were talking that. about that literally last night. It's, it's like white oh, space. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you'd be stupid not to do it, really, right? <laughs> like, I, I can't. I am. I'm going to just have, like, them eyes. make my eyes look red constantly. So you'll never know. <laughs> Donna, you're already I think you're there. doing that already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, George, what's your top moment of 2020? You know, my top moment has probably been the limited amount of travel that I have been able to do. Uh, you know, I, I find it extremely refreshing to, to get kind of a change of scene. And I tell you that uh, because of the way things have changed this year, it's given me a whole new level of appreciation for how fortunate, uh, at least I've been, and I think many of us have been, that uh, we've taken a lot of things for granted in previous years. Yeah. So, uh, you know, 2020 has been kind of a good wake-up call to take a deep breath, be happy for what you got because... You know, although it could always be better, it could be a whole lot worse. Mm -hmm. And Michael, I see you're holding the mic ready. Uh, what is your top moment of the year? I know it's going to sound like I'm brown nosing here, but it was, it was honestly getting this job. And uh, what is it about working at Dynavap that makes it your moment? It's working with me. Yeah, it's all Donna. It's, it's all actually Donna. all Donna. It is working with it's me. All Donna. Definitely Donna. <laughs> She's so humble. <laughs> no, but she is one of uh, several, several, several reasons, which is just the family here in general. Uh, I've never been excited to go to work and see people. That's a new one for me, so... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a pleasure. And like my top moment, it's very simple. It wasn't as spiritual. It was just something very, very simplistic. I, With 2020, it was locked down for me for a large part of the year. And last moment, got to kind of take a vacation and did nothing but sit outside in a hammock with my fiance, 
doing a whole lot of app caps, reading a book, while listening to the waves of Lake Michigan uh, coming in. And Ben has a photo of uh, just me chilling out in the hammock, just enjoying life. With uh, sunflower dress. Now, <laughs> now that you mention that, I have to bring it up. Why are you terrified of sunflowers? Don't know. Always have been afraid of sunflowers. Love sunflower seeds, but big sunflowers. I know Yoda. Yoda's afraid of sunflowers he's, too. He's shocked. I, I, yeah, he's terrified. Oh, they freak me out. Seriously, if I got like really twisted one night, and my friends would do this, carry me out to a, a sunflower field and leave me in there. If I woke up, oh seriously, put a rope on me and drag me out. Because I don't, I, I don't think I'd be able to do that. <laughs> We'll have, yeah. to, we'll have to do that. We'll have to, maybe that we'll post something like that for on our Instagram page or YouTube. My Just. whole career on every single one of my jobs, everybody has thought it's funny to go and on my birthday, I had a twelve foot sunflower, real sunflower, in my office one day. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you'll see that so on my Facebook. Your office too. had a really high ceiling. Yes, it did have a very high ceiling. <laughs> Or I perceived it was high. <laughs> and so we've all had some really interesting moments, but we know the community has as well. So we asked the community to submit their Click Moment Award for 2020. Uh, and we are giving away an Xbox Series X. We'll be announcing the winner of that in a little bit. But first, let's go through the uh, five through number two. And number five, Ben. I love this photo. It's I just do too. Did you nice the story photo. behind yeah. these two? They hadn't seen each other in like a really long time, and then they ended up being able Aww. to see each other. Yeah, it was. It's just kind of a, a give me a good feels moment. It. And then number four. Now this one I like. I like those uh, cases. I like their, that they're magnetic. Yeah. I well, we all like magnets here. It's, it comes with the territory. <laughs> they're if you kind of magnetic. They are. They are kind of magnetic. <laughs> is that why we like magnets? <laughs> it possibly is. And number three. Now this one we all really enjoy, yeah, like just amazing. the way that this one is framed. I think that would make a sweet print. Uh, and number two. Now we did the Dyna Garden. This person did their own garden. Yeah. And it's a pretty nice little harvest. I'd be so curious. Th there are growing stems or roots. <laughs> 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 let's make let's make a bath cap, a carrot bath cap. Seriously, we could do it with a drill. Let's get a drill and. Okay. Bath cap. We're doing that tonight. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. To. I think I know where I can find the right size drill. I think you can too. I know where to get carrots. <laughs> cool. You have to share this Did information. Did you bring them with you? <laughs> I'm not telling you guys. I'm gonna have to take a cyanide tablet and just after to protect myself. Secret. Um, and so uh, when we come back, we're going to uh, show you some of the runners up in a little bit. And when we come back, we'll announce the grand prize winner of the Xbox Series X, as well as Randy's winners of a carbon fiber Omni with seven fin tip, as well as two CVAPs with puck grinders. And so let's see those runners up. And thank you, Dynaverse, for, for submitting all those awesome photos. We really appreciate it. some really cool ones. Yeah, yeah. we love seeing yeah. that glimpse into your life. Uh, it allows us to, I think, get, gain a little bit more perspective. Yeah, and you, you have a little more understanding. Mm -hmm. And the stories behind the pictures just make the pictures that much yeah, better. Yeah. Mm -hmm, for sure. And so, without further ado, our grand prize winner of an Xbox Series X for the Click Moment Award of 2020, it goes to Milo Frazier. Uh, Milo Frazier had a very interesting story. Uh, he's, uh, they said that they had cardiac arrest on May 24th of 2020, was in a coma for two weeks, was in a rehab hospital for about a month learning to walk again, and now has a neurological condition from surviving death. It's certainly been an experience, but it's made me learn to take it one day at a time and enjoy life's little moments. 
And wow. so, great story, yeah. Milo, and congratulations. Uh, your prize is on the way. Hope that you uh, get a lot of use from it and enjoy. And then, Randy, you also have some winners. I can't believe you guys just gave away an Xbox like that. That's amazing. And what, what an inspirational <laughs> post, too. That's yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, so, it went to someone who yeah, really deserves it, for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's so awesome of you guys. So what are we giving away again? Uh, so the first two that you're going to announce will be getting a CVAP and a uh, puck grinder. Yeah, the check these grinder. things out. The puck grinders are pretty awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And there's something really cool about them. When you put them on the table. Uh -oh. I haven't tried you love to with fidget. mine yet. We can make them battle each other. And oh, see knocks off the table oh yeah, first. we're doing that after this. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're need to get that. some more PBR though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, who is the first lucky winner of a CVAP and a putt grinder? Excuse me. Okay. Okay. Would you mind? No, no problem. <laughs> okay, great. So, I picked some winners earlier. Oh, and he wrote it on paper. <laughs> Good old paper. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, we picked the the winners uh, through a very randomly biased method uh, method of comments I liked before we got started here. Uh, so the CVAP and puck grinder. Uh, Frodo seven oh four who commented that he just finished a microbiology final and he was able to tune in and watch this today. So Frodo yes. seven Frodo seven oh four, you're awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, Frodo. And the second winner. Uh, that would be Eddie Acevedo, A-C-E-V-E-D-O. And the reason is because he was the first one I saw that was kind of brown nosing Puff It Up in the comment section. So, <laughs> Smart man. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. So that <laughs> one was a, that was 100% bias. Absolutely. And, and the grand prize winner. The grand prize winner. What was that prize again? It is a carbon fiber Omni with a seven fin tip. That's phenomenal. What a... Wow, you guys are so generous. <laughs> That's here. just a go the, big or go home. The last remaining stock of yeah. the carbon fiber bodies that I kind of found in one of my desk drawers from I think 2017 when we made those. Mm -hmm. So I have two potential winners. Pick number one or number two. Number two. Number two. That is John Cocktoo Stone, who lost his Dynacoil in a. Sink was it? We were and just talking about yeah, that we were. one. Well, yeah. You know what? Well, let's make sure we put a Dyna coil in there. We kind of have yeah. to, don't yep. we? Yeah, I think yeah. yeah. Great so story. for so, Frodo, John, great story. Eddie. He dropped it in his spot. <laughs> I was actually going to tell John to go ahead and chew up some gum, get some chopsticks, and start going down and go fishing. But <laughs> and please send us a photo if you do that because that would be hilarious. <laughs> exactly, yeah. video would be better. Definitely. And so John <laughs> Cockstone, uh, Eddie. And Frodo, reach out to JC at Dynavap.com and we will get those winnings out to you in a little bit. And so I think now, because we've talked about the Carbon Fiber Omni, yep. we talked about the puck grinders, we yes. need to talk about the OCS page. Yeah. Yes, OCS. What does OCS stand for, George? Obsessive Compulsive, uh, other cool stuff. And so we have, <laughs> that's where the Herb Ripper is now. That's where a very limited number of Carbon Fiber Omnis with seven fin tips yes. are. So if you want those, I'd recommend getting those as soon as possible because they're going to go fast. And the puck grinders. And the puck grinders. You know, so uh, we've got the Herb Ripper, which is a really nice stainless steel grinder. In mm -hmm. fact, I think it's one of the only stainless steel grinders that I'm mm -hmm. aware of. Um, but uh, they're a little bit on the pricey side. We found these puck grinders, which are an aluminum version like a lot of the other ones out there. However, they're made in the U.S. In fact, Arizona, if I think I have my information mm. correct. So we really like supporting makers out there and we found uh, an individual making grinders in his little shop in Arizona and so they're now in our shop for your enjoyment we think you'll like them they have a really nice simplistic design uh, no threads all in all I think it's a pretty nice grinder mm -hmm. and I'd recommend like checking out the OCS page because we'll be updating that periodically with other cool shit and so I think now is a great time to uh, Kind of pick your brain a little bit, Randy, again. Throw it at me. I'm curious as to your selection process when choosing what to stock at Puff It Up. How does that work for you? Well, you got to be picky because there's a lot of bad uh, extraction devices out there, and that's something we're very careful about. Typically, when we start with a new product, we need five or six units. We got to rip a few apart, make sure that there's no materials that don't belong in certain places. Sometimes you see adhesive. Sometimes you see misuses of silicone. There's lots of, of, of safety issues that we, we have to check off our list before we even consider a product. After that, of course, we got to like it. 
You know, we don't just want to carry something for the sake of carrying it. I, it's really hard to recommend something if you don't believe in it yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we try to stick to extraction products and accessories that I enjoy, things that I would use, things that don't anger me like some of them tend to do, you know? <laughs> I won't name any names, but there's some, <coughs> there's some products and accessories out there that you just see them and you, you don't understand why they're being made. You know, mm -hmm. we want, things should have a reason. Things, and and uh, more than anything, it, you know, it's just, it's gotta work good. You know, mm -hmm. so so Randy, if you don't mind, uh, for anyone that isn't familiar with Puff It Up, could you maybe elaborate a little bit? I mean, sure. Your, your mission? Do, do you smell? Do you, do you sell rolling papers? Absolutely not. No way. Okay. Strictly uh, herbal extractions, and that's okay. what we focused on. Um, the reason being, uh, I, I started in this industry at a very young age. I was about 14, 15 before uh, Prop 215 in California. I was one of the younger uh, medical patients at the time, uh, so I've been in this industry for a long time. Back then, the only uh, I was going through chemotherapy. The only real way to consume was either through edibles, which didn't work well with chemotherapy because there was a lot of uh, nausea involved, you mm -hmm. know? So combustion was the only way to go. Uh, early on, I noticed these people using what looked like light bulbs to heat their herbs, <coughs> and it was a non-combustion method. And that's how I got into this industry was just figuring out what those were. So the light bulb and, literally went off. <laughs> <laughs> very true, yeah, very true. And it was funny because back then when, when I first started Puff It Up, the most common question is, what are you talking about? What's a vaporizer? And now you talk about uh, um, these products, herb extraction devices, and people go, oh yeah, Dynavap, oh yeah, Volcano. And it's great seeing that. And it's great seeing people pick the right products too. Mm -hmm. I agree. And That's so really cool. I, I love your story. I think it's mm -hmm. so important. Thank and you. Showing you know, the importance of this method of consumption. It offers an outlet for people who may not have another choice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that's very important to recognize. Uh, and F4 asked a really good question. We kind of already touched on it a little bit on the quality <coughs> control process. How about actually selecting what to curate? Like who decides, is it a coalition of your employees or is it you? How does that go about? Like we're, what criteria are you hitting on? We're, um we're, we're very democratic in our process with our team, and part of that is because we all come from different backgrounds. I kind of come from a, um, a usability kind of background, a design background. Uh, we have people on our team that are materials experts that have spent their life studying materials for DuPont and other companies, and we have people that have other STEM backgrounds that we trust and we talk to. Uh, we all kind of need to kind of come to a consensus. Do we like this product? The first step is, is this product safe? Is this product, you know, and that, that's, it's a harder question to answer than people expect sometimes. It takes a lot of testing. And then after that, we all just kind of have to agree together. Is this something we can all recommend? And if someone on the team doesn't really want to recommend a product, that's okay. If the majority of the people don't like something, that's probably a good sign we shouldn't carry it. And mm -hmm. that's typically how we go about our decisions. Now, I'm going to ask, we kind of touched about this a little bit during rehearsal, but what are some of your other favorite extraction devices that are on the market? Oh God! I mean, I, I'm I'm definitely um, a fanboy of the Dynavat products for sure. Uh, Healthy Rips has always been one of my favorite uh, battery vaporizers. I love the more artisan companies like Sticky Bricks. Oh, for uh, sure! Shout I out love to Ken, Sticky Bricks. Shout out to Kenny from Sticky Bricks. Hey Kenny! Made, yeah, Hi he, Kenny! He makes some of the coolest uh, lighter-based uh, extraction devices out there, in my opinion. Well, He's you got to hit too. that giant brick too. Yeah, he made me one that's this big, and yeah. I love it. No yeah. way! Yeah, I got to get a vap cap that's double that size to really yep. show them up. Well, and I think that goes along for here too. Like I know a lot of us have many different methods of consumption and that al I think allows us to have a better perspective of what we're looking for because we know not oh. every, one size doesn't fit all. And that kind of leads into the uh, VAS. People want to customize their experience in so many different ways, wouldn't you yes. agree? Yes, uh, I think uh, you know the VapCap accessory system is a great way to customize your device specific to your own personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, I see a really good question here from our arena. Is it best to burn off the alcohol after you clean the Dynavat? Dry fire. I read uh, mine. You know, if you like playing with fire, uh, that's kind of your call. But uh, <laughs> I would generally strongly discourage people from uh, lighting solvents on fire. Uh, it's, you know, but then the the place to do that right? is the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the fire extinguisher. Uh, you know, I'm just generally not a big fan of lighting things on fire that aren't intended to be on fire. See, Pranav takes care of that for you. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little fire bug. And then uh, Tom Raham, I uh, hope I pronounced that correct, 
why don't more brick and mortar shops carry Dynavap? I wanted to visit one in Seattle, support local business, and couldn't find anything. This oh, is a Donna question. Thank you guys. Thank you for asking. Go into your shop. My email address is Donna at Dynavap.com. Give it to them. Call me, 262-751-3788. Let's get these guys to come on in. A lot of people out there just don't know about us. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing product. And COVID, it's, it's stopped us from being able to go out and do trade shows face to face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been doing virtual trade shows and that, but yeah. I mean, that's still, it's, not the it's same, still yeah. new. Yeah. Cool avatar, so they're kind of fun to run <laughs> around as, a, as an avatar. Um, Seriously, you guys, go in and just talk to them and say, hey, I like this product. Um, when the customer talks to the shop, it, makes a huge it is difference. so it much is. more powerful than when us as a company approaches a shop. Yeah, because they're already having a potential customer. Well, they look at me as, oh, you're just sales and you're trying to you know, sell another me Another solicitor. You know, I just know people are going to buy this eventually. So I'm not a pushy kind of salesperson. I take the approach of I want to understand your business because we do have a variety of different products to be able to tailor to your customers. Do you have a lot of glass in your place? You need the Hydra series. You need the M. You might need to get some adapters because not a lot of 10 mils are out there. I am here to be able to help you guys. So talk to your or your, your brick and mortar shops and tell, tell them about us. And support mm -hmm. them because uh, they're definitely struggling this yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too, and I think this kind of goes to the education. I know you assist with this, and Randy, you do a lot of it yourself. Uh -huh. uh, but the VAP cap, when a person first looks at it, it's different. It's not like anything else on the market. It's true. And so, if you have a friend and you like, oh, I love this thing, show them how to use it. That's yes. so beneficial. Uh, I, and I think that's one of the most critical parts of being a member of the Dyniverse, mm -hmm. and that's sharing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. And Randy, uh, to follow up on F fours. How often do you reject products? More so than we, we accept them. It, wow. it, it's a huge ratio of rejection. Uh, one thing I really like doing is we rip apart products and sometimes we don't catch everything that's wrong with a product and so we like to post those things in advance and show them online what the internals look like. And there's things we miss all the time that are you know that our engineers miss and customers will bring it up, hey, what about that? Mm -hmm. And we'll go, you're right, that's wrong. We shouldn't carry it because of that reason. Mm -hmm. But we generally kind of start, especially with extraction products, these are something, I mean, it's something you hold, you put in your mouth and you inhale from. That's serious, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You can't mess around with something like that. And so typically, most products we kind of just reject off the bat just assuming we're not gonna like it. And we kind of find reasons to like it as opposed to starting with we wanna carry it. You know, mm -hmm. I want to know that the products we have are the best of the best from that safety standpoint. There's a lot mm -hmm. of things that can go wrong with inhaling pretty much anything and you gotta be cautious mm -hmm. about that. Now, when you, uh, Donna and Randy, when you're talking to uh, customers about a VAP cap, how do you usually go about explaining the process of heating to them? Oh, I use your, your <laughs> tips. Up. If you want to get a tasty rip, hit it at the tip. If you want to be launched into space, you hit it at the base. I was actually onboarding somebody the other day, and I, I used that, and they're like, oh, I like that a lot. <laughs> um, People like rhymes. <laughs> it, it, they do. And I know when I was in engineering school, it helped me with yep. having rhymes and things yeah, like that. We, well, sing an engineering rhyme, Donna. I'm not good to sing an engineering rhyme, sorry. Well, then say an engineering rhyme. What was, do you not uh, remember any? Uh, no, I, it's, it's been years since. Uh, the resistors. Yes. Mm -hmm. RG, uh, there is a bad thing that you can say a, a, a rhyme, and those electronic people out there know what I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs> I'm going to try and not be an asshole anymore. <laughs> this is my do not be an asshole harm. Um, speaking of that, I really, I just resonated with what you said. You are really digging down to try and find safe products. You're not trying to go out there and just rob people and try and make a ton of money. There's plenty of products that we can just carry and sell. And if that's all we want to do and just have that pass through of let's stock it and make some money, mm -hmm. that's doable. But I think people trust us not to do that. And I think that's an important trust to, to huge. have. Yeah, it's and, huge. And I don't want to devalue that in any way. Right. I mean, there's lots of products out there that sometimes it's not just a safety issue. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a pricing issue. Sometimes mm -hmm. products are viciously overpriced for no real True. reason and True. a lot of times it comes down to celebrity promotions um yeah you know the some sometimes a famous rapper wants their name on i think i know where you're going then, <laughs> then the product is 50 times more expensive than it should be mm -hmm. and that's right. something that we just don't want to get into we're not here to 
charge people for the silly right. stuff. We want some, and that's part of that's more than just safety. It has to be the right product too, you know. And that's you're doing it the right way. Yeah, I like. I hope so. <laughs> well, I just that's the way I feel about Dynabap too. Oh, I've totally. worked at other companies, the corruption and all that, and we just are not that. Yeah, well, and it yeah. boils down to at the end of the day, you want to promote what you're using yourself. Right. Oh, totally. Yeah, and the last thing I'm going to do is recommend something I wouldn't use myself. Mm -hmm. That's why would you do that? Why, why do that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a terrible way to go about a business. And that life. leads me into my next question. What VAT cap do you reach for the most and what one is your favorite? Mm -hmm. Oh God, which one do I reach for the most and which one are my favorite? Those are kind of two little different ones. Mm -hmm. one, the one I use the most is actually a 2019 VAT cap M. And the reason is, is because they last forever. I mean, if you, if you have, I have a 2017, one of the original M's, it's good as new. They work great, you know? And so I have my old 2019 M. I take it with me all the time. If I lose it while I'm hiking or I fall down and somehow manage to break it because I got hit by a train or something, I won't feel too bad. You know what I mean? My, my favorite prized uh, VAP cap, which I use all the time as well, was um, we had a small venue uh, a while ago. It was hosted by Austin from Simrel Collection. George, you remember this? You yep. were there. Uh, it was a very small get together, and um, Austin was nice enough to gift me um, one of his Vortex stems. And you happen to have a matching phantom tip that you guys pieced together, and it was a gift from Austin and you, which is one of my favorite pieces. I, I brag about it to anyone that's willing to listen. <laughs> I, I love that piece. Sentimental. To death. Yeah, absolutely. The you sentimental value. You can show up that piece yeah. on your Instagram more. Oh, I do. Yeah, I know. Part of you know, part of it too is because it's always in use. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then Donna, what about you? What do you usually find yourself grabbing? Oh, well, I have one or two. Um, one or a hundred. One or a hundred. The other, the one I've been using lately, I also have a Simrel stem. They're great. Um, they are. I um, have been putting my Azurium tip blue mm. on it because it's, it's a blue stem. Nice. It's a burl stem. It's very nice. I like the Turbo Twist one that we have right now. Oh, those are really nice. The turbo, I got a mini turbo. I ended up getting a defective one from Coley, and it's like, wow, that thing pulls really hard. Yeah. Is it the mini or is it the full size? I got the mini one. You I should might, try the full I, size. I think I'm going to have to try the full size. The full size. size, like Flammy Flam from the Dynaverse told me, he's like, you have to try this. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. And fell in love immediately. It's a completely It's a different, it's a different experience. experience. I noticed with all of them, you're going to get flavor no matter what. Uh, but being a smoker, trying to stop smoking and just going to vaping, you still need that sensory. You need mm -hmm. that. You need those those feelings of the vapor coming out. Mm -hmm. And I found yeah. with the Turbo Twist and even the Cimarron, your first hit, you're still getting vapor, but you the taste, I should say, but you're getting a ton of vapor that comes mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Well, and I think what that boils down to is a lot of people. It comes down to practice. Mm -hmm. You want it does. Like the reason why we're all enthusiastic because we know how to best utilize the device mm -hmm. and it takes practice and it makes perfect. The practice is important, right mm -hmm. Michael? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, remember originally I kept on telling George I need a bigger bowl, I need a bigger bowl and he's like, no Don, you need a microdose. Well, I haven't gone back. Yeah. Really, microdosing mm -hmm. is the way, I just have to load it more often. Yeah, I have a tip that's dedicated to that. I am that I, just about flavor. But the yeah. screen in the small position is mm -hmm. glorious. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you're an expert at changing them out, you can do it behind your back. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can adjust the screen behind your back. And it's, it's, it kind of leads into a, a big aspect of a lot of the design that we put into our devices is to make them very tactile. Mm -hmm. So that you can mm -hmm. kind of feel your way around the device and, and let your fingers know where they are positioned on the device so you can get that functionality, especially in conditions where you can't see well, or if you just simply don't see well, it's just kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Or you're watching a movie and that too. it's a little mm -hmm. dark or whatever. It just becomes intuitive. Mm -hmm. That's where I, I like the Hydra Omni. Oh! Because then what I'll do is I'll just seal that sucker up, click and put it in the water pipe and Yeah, yeah off to, to the town. races. Yeah, off but to the races. Yeah, I urge everyone who first get it, uh, on this week's episode of The Snap, we covered how to gauge your heating technique if you're just mm. starting out or even if you're an experienced user. You can really kind of test the effectiveness and from this week's episode or this month's episode of The Snap. <laughs> Welcome to The Snap. 
This is a segment where we answer frequently asked questions in a very rapid fire format. So let's get right into it. On this week's episode of The Snap, I'm gonna be demonstrating how to properly gauge your heating technique using a common pantry staple, marshmallows. We conducted several heating techniques using marshmallows in place of a VAP cap to demonstrate visually what happens when a VAP cap and a torch is used improperly. The marshmallow in these experiments represents the material you've loaded into the tip. While we mostly demonstrated bad techniques, we also share some good techniques. We have lots of episodes that demonstrate proper heating technique right here. When working with first clickers, the most common reason for poor performance is due to poor technique. This is your material when you have poor heating technique. Pure combustion. I'll go over several bad techniques with you first, so that way you know what to avoid when you're getting ready to sesh. The most common bad technique that I see is burying the flame. I'm fuzzy on the whole good bad thing. What do you mean bad? This only works with a Bic lighter because a Bic is not very hot. But a single torch, that's gonna destroy your material in seconds. Almost immediately, it ignites. That's your material inside the thermal extraction chamber. And it smells like barbecued dog hair. Another issue that I see quite frequently is too slow rotation speed, moving it incredibly slow. And it takes a little bit longer to reach that ignition point, but just like before, we don't want burning, we want vaporization. Another bad technique is very similar to burying in the flame, but not quite as extreme. When you hold the VAP cap, or in this case, baby stay puffed, you can rather quickly see hot spots forming. Hot spots are bad, okay? Okay. Okay. Now that we've burnt a couple of marshmallows, I'm gonna show you how to do it the right way with a dagger torch. It's an interesting torch as the jet streams cross. Cross the streams. Three things to remember. Consistent rotation speed, keep your flame about an inch away from the cap, and stop as soon as you hear the click. Respect the click. The technique I'm using is called the infinite spin. And as you can see, this works perfectly with a marshmallow as well. If I were to stop and keep heating, the marshmallow on that side will start to burn. I wonder if this would work with a hot dog. You can even see some vapor coming off the marshmallows. And you're gonna see those marshmallows start to brown. And there we go. No burning. Tasty. Delicious marshmallow. And so if you can do this, you can use a VAP cap. And bright side is, if you don't know how to roast a marshmallow, well now, when the urge to eat comes in, you have a snack. I hope you found this episode of The Snap helpful in gauging your personal technique without having to dip into your personal valuable stash. Thank you for watching this episode of The Snap. Let us know what other tips and tricks you'd like featured on future episodes. And once again, I'm Retail Josh, and thanks for watching. Michael, that is so good. How long have you been playing? Uh, a while. <laughs> uh, I've been playing for 15 years. That's pretty damn good, Michael. <laughs> Real nice. Yeah, it's not Real nice. I'm, I'm nervous tonight. This is my first time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that usually happens for people's first time, doesn't it? <laughs> and so we want to thank uh, Michael for that little musical interlude. Uh, we do have a question that I want to take from Nick Lynn. Uh, who said, any recommendations on humidity packs and how much does proper humidity affect using the M? Uh, I can only speak for myself, but I always use Boveda packs personally. Uh, the 62%, I use them religiously with anything uh, herb related. I think it makes for a much better experience, especially like if you go to a store and you bring it home, it, a lot of the times it's dry, it wasn't mm -hmm. stored properly. That helps maintain it a little bit longer. You take care of your material, it's going to take care of you in the long run. And you can reuse those packs too. Mm -hmm. yep. what's, your, what's your thoughts on, uh, on the humidity there, Randy? 
it's really hard to gauge that where we live because yeah. we're at a very high elevation where the air is really dry. Right. So, so things we, are dry. Yeah, I usually go with 62% humidity packs mm -hmm. uh, personally and for me that it's always worked great. I don't mm -hmm. think I've put the thought into it that you probably have for the, the vacuum <laughs> packs. I was actually excited to hear your answer on yeah, that. Yeah, and so I think what it boils down to is you're extracting the compounds on, out on there in dry air. Correct me if I'm wrong, George, but they aerosolize in dry atmosphere. They, they certainly can. Yeah, and so by keeping that humidity in there, I notice it just, it feels better, it tends to smell better, taste better, and it doesn't break down as easily. So when you pop it in, like, say, a puck grinder, it's not going to turn to dust. It's still going to retain some of that shape. Uh, and Not as harsh either. Yeah, it's not yeah. as harsh. It's yeah. just an overall better experience. I, that's one of my first things I'm, when I'm dealing with customers who are like, I'm not getting the type of draw that I want. I'm like, how are you storing your material? It's... That's one of those variables you got to control. It's like if you store a nice bottle of wine in a sun uh, on a shelf with sunlight, it's not going to taste that great. However, if you keep it in a climate controlled dark room, it's going to taste and last a lot longer and age. Like cheese. <laughs> like cheese. Like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, this one I think is a fun one. We'll all answer this one. Mel M asks, what's your family's strangest holiday food or tradition? And so, Donna, I think you have some. I got a strange family <laughs> strange in general. Ones. No, I got a fun family. We have this, it's like a pasta kind of fruit salad thing. And the pasta, they're like just really tiny. They look like fish eyes. So my brother always calls, hey, make that fish eye uh, pasta salad or whatever, the fruit salad. Mm -hmm. That and we do for breakfast, we make a special breakfast. So it's like croissants and bacon and eggs and with, with fish eye pasta salad. Fish eye pasta salad. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know. It's one of these traditions that we just every year. You ever eat fish eyes? No, but I'd be up. For, oh, no, no, I haven't. Okay. I would try it. Okay. No, we're what about dinner? What about Let's you, Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. What, have we'll I ever had fish, fish eyes? eyes? Yeah. we got to get you macaroni and cheese. Uh, <laughs> actually, I was kind of coerced into it after I coerced my boy into eating a fish eye. Ah. <laughs> well, See, I think it helps if you don't know what it is. Well, it was kind of hard to not know what yeah. it was as we cut as it out of the fish yeah. when we were cleaning the fish. How did, what did it taste like? Fishy? Well, it popped. Oh, <laughs> nice! <laughs> it's like a gusher. <laughs> you make it sound it's so like good. It's like a pop rock. Yeah. Well, is it really that much different than caviar? Well, that's what I was thinking. I've had Texture caviar. Right you know, Michael's and, back there. Oh, yeah, and, it's and you're different. thinking about it you know, from uh, you know, the sushi perspective, there, there's a lot of other, you know, seafood products that go into various types of sushi. Mm -hmm. What's really the difference? Mm -hmm. It's valid. Yeah. Yep. And true. what about you, Randy? What is uh, your weirdest or uh, holiday food tradition? Now if you have one. Is it event or food? Uh, yeah. Okay, because I got to throw out the event one because uh, my mom's watching right now. She promised to watch this stream. So, hi, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> hi, Randy's mom. Um, since a very early age, uh, as long as I can remember, my family meets up every November. Uh, there's a bridge in Santa Cruz, a very small bridge, and we go there during fall when the leaves are turning yellow, and we drop leaves off that off that bridge. Cool. And we've been doing that as a family since the day I was born. We've been doing that every year. Uh, the weirdest food is probably anything my mom makes because she's <laughs> definitely not the cook in the house. I love her to death, but uh, the food, be a little careful. So. <laughs> See, that's, that's kind of like mine with... Thanksgiving. I'm not a huge turkey fan to begin with. I think turkey mm. is tends to be dry, overcooked, and so mine. I haven't done it for the past two years simply because I wanted to relax. But I would cook a separate turkey <laughs> my way, <laughs> so I would have something that I would enjoy. <laughs> Sorry, but <laughs> Josh's turkey. So did you bring it to Thanksgiving yes. and do a secret swap? I just was like, hey, I'm making one. I brought the Nesco, and I'm like, I'm preparing my own. If anyone wants to have it, feel free. But yeah, I oh, wanted. Also, it's a oh. popularity contest. It kind of yeah. It turns into, hey, which turkey do you like more, the the dry one or the one so with? So what do herbs? you do different that yours isn't dry? I, well, f a, a I, br I brine it. Ah, I okay. brine it, and then I will uh, put butter and herbs underneath the skin. Yeah. Ooh, wow. And stuff it with citrus, and so yep. it has a little bit more of an herbal, rich Bag flavor. It. So we're yep. at your house next year for next Thanksgiving. <laughs> I love to cook, and so anything to do that. And I know, Michael, you are a trained chef yourself. But you have an interesting <laughs> thing, right, with that when you cook. Oh, yeah, yeah. We didn't do this in rehearsals. No, so I'm not throwing you a curveball. Uh -oh. <laughs> I want to put you on edge because you were nervous. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You do have a nice kitchen. 
Um, and we just got the backflash redone and oh, uh, nice. industrial hood then. It's really, really nice. fantastic. Uh, no, so he's talking about the concussion I had, I'm assuming, so I can't taste or smell anymore. Mm -hmm. So I taste off the texture almost entirely. But your girlfriend makes the most amazing food. I know, and I like every day I, I feel so sorry for her because I can't appreciate her <laughs> to the uh, full extent. <laughs> her cooking is incredible. And then, George, what is your uh, weirdest or holiday event or food tradition? Wow. I don't know if we have a whole lot of holiday events or food traditions, but uh, occasionally we'll bring some interesting foods to eat. Uh, I like to bring home uh, foods from different places that I go. Uh, and I definitely like sharing some old cheese, the older the better. It's kind of a thing here in Wisconsin is who's got the oldest cheese. Yeah, you've brought some pretty old cheese. Wasn't there like almost a 15 year old cheddar that you brought once? Uh, oh, yummy. no, it was older than that. Oh, jeez. It's almost as you old get, as Ben. You get the crystals in there, that's fine. Oh, yeah, I just love it when the cheese gets almost as old as Ben. <laughs> but it's getting harder to find cheese that's almost as old as Ben. Ben cheese. <laughs> and see, the reason why I'm giving Ben a hard time is because he did this. He turned oh. me into an Ewok. <laughs> And so it's I have awesome. to dish it back a little bit. <laughs> he didn't have to really add a whole lot of hair. Uh, but yeah, that was Ben's <laughs> moment of 2020. Uh, and then you wanted to give a shout out to someone as well who we found out was watching. Sandy, right? Sandy! Oh my God, Sandy. Thank you so much for being a fan of ours. We literally in wholesale were going back and forth. Oh, wow, Sandy. We, we loved, your, loved your story. Love that you love our product. Um, and my advice to you, you had a question about the coil, just go back and forth between flower and coil. Uh, I always recommend to have it a cap and coil an extra tip and mm -hmm. coil with you to be able to go and just easily swap when you're on the go. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you being a big fan. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I see a question from Brian Anderson. George, did you get that email with the three drinking chocolate recipes I sent to you? Oh. Uh, I'm not sure which email it went to. Uh, and so, so uh, shoot I'll it. Have to look into that. If you want to shoot that over to me, Josh at Dynavap.com, I can make sure that gets to George. Thank you. Get that and, to me too. That sounds good, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll share it. I'll, I'll test it first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Drinking chocolate's awesome. I, I, God knows I need it. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the effing diabetic says. How, <laughs> Couldn't have planned that Great better segue. myself. Yeah, the effing <laughs> diabetic says, how do you suggest cleaning and flattening the screen CCD to use? Ooh. George, I'm going to let you take that one away. What is your recommended tip? Well, uh, on the one hand, throw it away and buy a new one. <laughs> yeah, you can buy it from Randy, puff it up. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> or Yoda. Or, or Yoda.com, yes, baby Yoda. Or, you know, that toothbrush that you really need to replace? You know, that in some cleaning solution, soak it for a little bit and brush it out. Uh, flattening them, I've used the condenser like a rolling pin mm. on a flat, hard surface. Mm -hmm. Works pretty darn good. Wine bottle works. <laughs> mm, I suppose. It sure does. It sure does. Uh, I generally don't recommend torching them, uh, although it will clean them really well. It, it, it changes the chemical structure of the metal uh, through a process called annealing, which then makes them less likely to hold their shape when you put them back into position. They bend easier and they just become generally a pain in the ass. Although they get clean very quickly. <laughs> take, so. the, take the long process, it'll well, last you longer. Clean them, uh, soak them, scrub them, or replace them. Yeah, or if you don't combust, like if you wanna do what I do, and I know several other of you out in the community do as well, just pop it in some coffee or milk and oh, off you go. Yeah, And you not know, worry about how Take the whole the tip and drop it in your favorite beverage, but make sure you put in the fat. Yep. Yes. Yeah, it's yes. important to have that fat content. Coconut creamer is my favorite. See, I usually just go full, like, For full cleaning. Cream, whole fat oh, I, The other day, you were talking about the whole milk stuff, <laughs> basically. I took my turbo twist and had some tongs. I put it underneath my Keurig and let the hot water go through. Oh, that's it smart. It <laughs> show arm, dude. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that I should that one. run the espresso machine, like, with one of my... <laughs> I would have jumped in on that one, too. <laughs> Give that a whirl. And then F4 has a question while we wrap everything up. Uh, what's in store for 2021, both with products and goals? George, I'll let you be the well, first one to answer. 
first thing we're going to do is we're going to address some of the other questions I've been seeing in the chat. Mm -hmm. We should have a new update on the Orion, uh, addressing some of the QC issues that were brought to our attention uh, when the first batch went out. So hopefully have more news and updates on that in the next week or two. Uh, things have been progressing nicely. Uh, we think that we found solutions to really improve the overall quality of that device. On top of that, we're going to stick with tradition and there will be a 2021 version of the M. And if things go smooth, there will be a new version of some other things that we make on <laughs> top of it. Yeah, it's going to be a super packed excited year. for that. It's going to be exciting uh, here. You know, I think we took a lot of the things that we were hoping to do this past year, which got uh, postponed, um, slowed down, whatever adjective you like to use, and now we're going to see if we can't incorporate them into what we now hope and are looking forward to being the best year that we've ever had. Nicely put. And I think we'll go around, and because we're approaching the new year, I think we should mention our New Year's resolutions. Oh. And so, uh -oh. Randy, I'm going to throw you a curveball right off the bat. What's yours? Try to s oh, get to man. the root of it right Separate off the bat. myself from Baby Yoda. I, I <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I want to raise my child, Baby Yoda, to be a great person. Um, my goal, and I'm currently training right now, is for uh, to run a 100-mile race uh, oh, coming this ultra summer. Ultra marathon. So, yeah. Not the Tahoe 200? Uh, that's a 200-mile race. Okay. This would be a Tahoe 100. Oh, so, yes. so you're working your way up? Oh, man. You're, would you like to run with me? You act like running 100 is not that far. <laughs> well played, sir. That was good. And how many days do I get to achieve it? 18 hours. 18 hours. 18 hours to run oh. 100 miles is the average time, rate, time frame. 18 hours to run 100 miles. You're doing the math wow. in your head, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what else should I be doing? I've just had a wager placed in front of me. I need to you know, assess the risk. If you say yes, I'm not going to be prepared for that, but I'm still down. You know what I mean? It he hasn't triple dog what, dared you what, yet. Uh, what month does it occur? Well, there's several throughout the summer. Uh, I'm okay. starting with a few 50-mile races, and then I'm going to aim for the end of the summer. I'm going to kind of push it off a little bit because it's a lot to train for. Oh, I, I bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a challenge. I wonder if my knees would handle that. I'm wondering. The Only same one way to find too. out. <laughs> Every time I'm running, I'm wondering about your knees. <laughs> <laughs> and then, George, what's your uh, New Year's resolution? <clears throat> my New Year's resolution is to be home less. Oh. And Donna. Awesome. Well, sure as hell isn't going to be running 100 miles, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, you know, COVID being stuck at home, I also agree with you, George. I want to be home less. Mm -hmm. uh, but lose the COVID weight. Oh, oh. it sucks. That's mine. <laughs> like, I like pasta too much. I, so Fish eyes. The, the Oprah comment I just, that you said earlier, my mind went to Oprah's, like, gif, I love bread. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, that's bread where my too. mind went to. <laughs> but, yeah, it's tough. Like, food's just delicious. And it is you want good. to eat it all. And Michael, what about you? What's your resolution? Uh, I actually don't really celebrate New Year's. I think it's kind of a, a joke holiday. But I think most of that <laughs> is bit my bias from bartending for so many years. Oh, and that'll yeah. do it. Yeah. So yeah. I live Amateur every night. day like it's New Year's and try to be the better version of me. <laughs> Nicely <laughs> put. <laughs> so it's better than living every day like it's last year's. True. <laughs> That's very, very true. true. And so we want to thank everyone for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We see a lot of people in the chat. Love all that support. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you like this video. That helps us tremendously, as well as subscribing to our channel uh, and then also ringing the bell so that way you're notified. Ding. Yep, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. And then <laughs> ding, ding. Uh, follow the Instagram page. Follow Randy on Instagram. That's Live Action Randy. Live Action Randy. And I got to give a shout out to Twitch. You guys are going to be yes. starting Twitch soon. We're on Twitch, uh, Puff It Up TV. And we would love to have you guys on, of course. Oh, for yeah, sure. Definitely. And we're excited for you to get into Twitch first, too, because it's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Yep. And so um, Michael cool. and myself, we're going to be on Twitch later tonight at uh, 7 p.m. And Michael's going to kind of tell you what we're going for with our Twitch channel. Oh, we, uh, you know, we're just in the year 2020, not able to vap caps with our buds anymore on a couch, you know, and just hang out. So we are essentially recreating the summer vacation from school time period where you go to your friend's basement, one person's playing games while everyone just hangs out. So that's what we're going for. And it's just kind of a chill atmosphere for people to talk and typically make fun of my gameplay. 
Oh, it, it's your own fault, Michael, because you need to get good. <laughs> I keep trying, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Well, because we make you do punishments. If you don't perform well enough for Dynavap, you have to pay the piper. Yes, and also starting from uh, since Monday now, I'm apparently uh, bartering for followers. So, uh, Fordpa, if you're watching, I hope you like your haiku. Uh, but you can try to will me to get you something, write a song, uh, haiku, anything like that for followers. See, what... what... I remember something to do with the hair, wasn't it, too? Yeah, someone wanted, oh, because my old gamer tag had monk in it, so they wanted me to shave my head like a monk. But I won't do that because I love my girlfriend, and she has to look at me, not me. So. <laughs> You're a smart man, Michael. And so, yeah, check us out. We'll be online tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time on Twitch, and so join in on the fun. I uh, want to thank you all for tuning in once again. Congratulations to our lucky winners. Uh, there was Eddie, and then we also had uh, Frodo and John Cocktastone, and then, of course, the grand prize winner, Milo. Uh, we will see you next time. Have a great new year, and thank you to the Dynaverse. Thanks, Dynaverse. Thank you. Hi, I'm Retail Josh. You may recognize me from the promotional videos on Dynavap.com and our YouTube channel. A lot of work goes into producing these different videos and mistakes happen. There's outtakes, funny out... F Today is June 19th, or no, 18th. And so welcome on Austin. It's great to finally have you on the show. Vap subreddit, and that can be found at reddit.com. And it does it so well. Oh, excuse my French, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pranav's getting the winner. It is Scott. Just Scott. Scott. And uh, let's kind of. <laughs> God damn it. Let's kind of. Um, okay. I'm sorry, Ben. I couldn't okay. keep it uh, PG 13. And I think that's a good lead in for this week's episode of The Snap where we discuss getting to know your cap. Yeah, Josh, that's a good question. I mean, what, what should the. Welcome to The Snap. Welcome. Don't do that. Damn it. It's close. How do you, uh, how do you, uh, okay, I got it. Yeah. We can record. Right. 2020 was a year. <laughs> Thanks for watching Dynavap Live. Please check out some of our other episodes or some of the other cool videos on our YouTube channel.